Hey guys, this is Christopher John Hill. It's good to see you again. And today we have another Guild Wars 2 gold farming, plus a couple of character builds, which are also very viable for gold farming as well. So in front of me, we have Countess Anise, and we have the original on my right and mine on the left. So I hope you guys like the uh, final result. It looks pretty identical to me, not bad at all. Okay, and then without uh, further ado, let's get underway. Okay, guys, we are back on a very familiar map, which I showed you previously before. Uh, this is a good spot to test this build out and to show you exactly what it's capable of. So first off, I will show you where the map is. Of course, it's the uh, Blaze Ridge Steps, and I am at the familiar waypoint, Guardian Stone Waypoint. Okay, on the skills down here, I have Mirage Mirror, uh, signet of Inspiration, Feedback, Mirror Images, and of course Signet of Humility. And on the Traits line, let me just show you. So first we have Inspiration. Um, we have the Sympathetic Visage, which takes away conditions when Phantasms are first summoned. On the next one we have the rest Restorative Illusions, which heals you up every time you shatter a skill. And finally, we have the Mental Defense, which casts a Lesser Phantasmal Defender every time you successfully block or evade an attack. On the second one, we have Chaos. Uh, we have Lesser Chaos Storm, which summons a Chaos Storm every time you use a healing skill. On the next one, we have cha Chaotic Potency, which gives you additional, additional damage uh, when you have a staff on. And on this one, we have Bountiful Disillusion, which gives you stability every time you use a Shatter skill, which is very invaluable indeed. And on the final one, we have Mirage, which gives us access to the Axe Proficiency, which we definitely have on and make use of. Okay, on the first one is Self-Deception. Using a Deception skill will create a clone, if you have any other clones active. Uh, reformed Mirage Mirror, uh, Desert Distortion. Basically, any illusions shattered by distortion become Mirage Mirrors. And finally, we have Sand Shards. This strike, uh, basically, if you strike nearby foes, removing a boon from them, gain a copy of any boons removed, which is very valuable indeed. Okay, as for a, our stats on our character, I'll just quickly run through that for you. Basically, we have power, toughness, and vitality on the armor. We have superior rune of fireworks, time six. Basically, the reason we're going for this is because not only do you get the 25% extra movement speed, but uh, of course you get the stacks of might, fury, and vigor as well. <clears throat> On the uh, weapons, we have the axe with uh, power, precision, and ferocity. And we have the fiery dragon sword on the offhand, which is power, precision, and ferocity as well. Uh, we have superior sigil of fire and superior sigil of air to ma ma basically maximize your DPS. <clears throat> and on the armor, we have uh, Power, Toughness, Ferocity with the Exquisite Opal Jewel. And then you have Opal or Callum Earrings. Uh, opal or Callum Rings. And then finally, the Opal or Callum Amulet. So essentially, that gives you 2262 Power, 1325 Toughness, 1299 Vitality, and of course, uh, 600, nearly 600 Ferocity. And a little bit of healing as well. 294. <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, get it underway. I'm going to show you what this build can do and whether or not you'd be interested in trying one out for yourself. And on this map, we have a lot of people that like to farm certain areas, so you're not always going to find targets available necessarily. You can always swap them to the map if need be. And uh, the reason I made this build is basically I wanted to create a build that was essentially a lot like a thief. It basically could do everything that a thief could do without having to necessarily use a thief all the time. So on this one, I believe I succeeded at that. So let's put that back on. Get rid of that. So you guys can see better. <clears throat> and we're just going to be going through all these uh, ghosts just to show you how quickly this build can let them out. I mean, this is if you wanted to mix things up. If you wanted to create a build that uh, was not going to be the regular run of the thief and uh, was able to basically take stuff out really fast. And this farming route is still very viable. 
you're still going to find a lot of thieves and you're going to find a lot of drops for um, the dust that comes down. And later on, I'm going to be showing you an area that has a lot of different um, resources that is going to make you more gold than I have been anywhere else in the entire game. And I, when I found it, I was like, wow. Because the first time I went through there, I was like, you know what? This area wasn't, wasn't so great at, at that time because uh, certain changes hadn't been made to the game yet. But uh, since then, a lot of things have changed. And that area has become very viable indeed. So as I said, guys, this is just to show you out what this build can do. I haven't even used any of my uh, stuff down the bottom there. And as you can see, I'm wiping stuff out extremely quickly. And you can also use your staff as well to create chaos storms, which is always handy to do. And you can also use your healing, which will create another chaos storm. So you have double the chaos storms. Pretty nifty indeed. Not bad at all, if I do say so myself. So there you go. Wipe those guys out in no time flat. So if you have, um, if you come across fighters, you basically can run past them, wipe out stuff behind them, and they come right back to them. And then they go straight down immediately. The Shatter skills are extremely useful. They grant you tons of boons, tons of damage, uh, because of all the might stacks you get in Fury, of course. And you basically just melt through stuff, like it's not even there for the most part. So, and then you just move on. So, this is for anyone that uh, enjoys Mesmers and they wanted a, a build to use that was not going to be just a run of the mill thief, just to do farming routes. And if you wanted to switch things up a little bit, and do something a little bit differently, then this is definitely the way to go. And on the next build I'm going to show you, it's going to be a Necromancer. And you're going to see exactly why I've designed that one the way that I have. Okay, so let's just swap out characters and I'm going to show you that. Okay guys, we have our next character, and this one is of course a Necromancer. So pretty much a run-of-the-mill Necromancer. Um, nothing uh, special about it in regards to specialized uh, trait lines. So let me just quickly show you that. So on the first one we have Blood Magic. And on the first one is the Blood Bond, which gives you lesser signet of vampirism. We have the Vampiric Presence, which of course uh, siphons health. And then finally we have the Unholy Martyr. Entering the Shroud transfers conditions from allies to you, and exiting the Shroud consumes all conditions currently on you, converts them to life force. On the next one we have Death Magic, which of course, uh, Flesh of the Ment Master, minions have increased health, gain purpose for each minion you control, and that increases your toughness. Necromatic Corruption, minions deal da more damage to take conditions from you, which is invaluable. And then finally we have Poison Nova, so every time one of your minions runs out of life force, they basically explode into poison, which is great for us. And finally we have Spite on the trait lines. Spiteful Talisman, increased damage to foes with no boons, focus and axe skills, which is exactly what we have on. Increase the damage on that and reduce recharge. Awaken the Pain, grant, might grant you more power and less conditional damage, which is great if you want to do instant damage. And then finally, Close to Death, increases the damage done when they're under 50% health by 20%, which is invaluable. On the, uh, the skills here, we have Signet of Vampirism, we have the Signet of the Locust to increase your movement speed, of course, the summon bone minions, the signal of spite to increase your power, and we have summon the flesh golem. And on the equipment, or statistics, sorry, equipment and statistics, we have uh, power, toughness, and ferocity, which is basically all cavalier on the armor. Uh, you have a superior rune of the pack, times six, and you have the axe, which is power. Precision Ferocity, uh, the, sign the Sigil of Fire, and then you have the the Focus, which is Power, Precision, and Ferocity, and Superior Sigil of Air. And down the bottom there, we all have Ruby on the uh, earrings, uh, the rings, uh, the amulet, and basically the Cavalier with the exquisite Ruby Jewel. And then we have a total of 2,449 Power, 1,445 Toughness, uh, we haven't touched the Vitality, but it's Baseline. Uh, nearly 900 ferocity and 150 healing. All right, so let's summon the minions. Just two of them is all you need. You don't need anything more than that. And then I will show you just how quickly this particular build 
can wipe out all of the enemies in front of us. So away we go. But you guys are going to be pretty shocked at how quickly this one can do damage. I mean, it does it extremely fast. Yeah, and I was very happy with this one. I was like, wow, this is uh, pretty awesome. If you want to take stuff out quickly, uh, just like a thief, then this is definitely the way to go. You know, you're going to be taking stuff out in like probably less than a second for the most part. And the more enemies you can clump up together, the better it's going to work out for you. So basically just uh, wipe these enemies out, It'll clump them all together, and then wipe them out all at the same time. And then you can see how just how fast and how effective this build really is. So one thing I sorely missed on the Thieves is the Dagger Storm, because it does take a little while to recharge. But on the Necromancer, the ability to basically drain the life, drain the life force away from the enemies is really fast. Yeah, so you guys are going to be uh, killing stuff left, right, and center. No problems at all. And then just moving on. So yeah, as you can see, enemies are just basically melting away. No problems whatsoever. And the axe skill recharges so fast, it's almost like firing a pistol off constantly. So I probably attribute some of this to the changes to the, the recent patches. Um, and I highly recommend this build. If you guys want an alternative to, th to a thief that is much more survivable, then this is definitely the way to go. You're going to be taking stuff out really, really quickly. Okay, now that we've done that, let's now show you the next section of this video, which of course is the ultimate farming route that I have found in the entire game. And to do that, we're going to do it with the other character, Countess Anise, and we'll get to that right now. Okay guys, here we are. We are on the map that we need to be on. And this of course is one of the final maps for the living story. We're at the map which is called the Bajor Marches. And we're at the waypoint, Bajor's Keep Waypoint. The reason we're going to be starting here is because I wanted to show you a couple things you can grab right off the bat, right from the start, right from the get-go. So let's uh, head there now. <clears throat> Basically, right next to the keep, right above it, you're going to find a chest, which is buried behind a wall, which you have to take down with a roller beetle. So once you've done that, there's going to be some very nice goodies inside, indeed. But just before we do that, I'm going to grab this. A verdant herb and I'll talk about that more in just a second so let's go straight to the wall here you always have usually two eternal ices and the glorious Norn chest and I'd highly recommend putting the glyph of the watch knight on to give you a watch for watch for profits which will give you a lot of extra silver and gold eventually and I would recommend getting this chest on every single character you farm on this map and then directly, uh, directly uh, to, off to the side of this, you're going to find another chest, which isn't too far away. Let's just have a look at our map, see where it is. Okay. So it is right down. And it is through this barrier, which of course has the Raven Lock on it. So you can take these guys out if you want to. You don't have to. And you can activate the lock and go straight in. And there's a Norn chest right there. So there you go. That's the second chest. Okay, and directly after this, you head straight out. You go straight ahead. Make a right. And then go straight ahead again. And you will, of course, find more verdant herbs. And another raven lock. So there we go. That's two of them now. And believe me, guys, there's a very important reason as to why we're collecting these. And it'll become much more evident the further ahead I go. You guys are going to be very pleased indeed. This section of the farming route is up to you. You don't have to go through that particular spot. You can just stick to the other side of the map if you want to. But I thought I would just show it to you anyways, just in case you want to bring your characters there to collect the, the chests and the extra verdant herbs. So there's another one there. I believe that's number three. 
And then we're going to be heading through this section right here, which is a forest. And you can, sometimes you're going to find more of those here, and sometimes not. But at the moment, we're just passing through just to show you guys where you need to go. Ooh, look at that, number four. Well, that's four of them so far. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. And now we have to find the route to get through, which of course is right there. And we shall head there now. So there we go. Found it. It's the way through. There you go. And then let's head straight ahead. And then I'm going to show you the section that I really wanted to show you guys, which you're going to be very impressed with very shortly. So I'm going to not even stop at the moment. I'm going to head straight to the waypoint just so we get a spot where you guys can get your bearings. And then we're going to go around and start collecting everything on this farming route. So basically you have a waypoint here, which of course is the still waters speaking waypoint. And from here, you basically head directly out the door. And then to the left, you have a mushroom here, which takes you up. So you head up there. And then go straight ahead. Trust me guys, this is worth waiting for. And then we have more verdant herbs. That was number five, number six, number seven. <clears throat> I think you guys can see what's, what's going on here. The more of these I collect, the more seeds I get. And the more gold, well, silver and then gold you guys are going to make. So, so far, I've already got seven of them. That's pretty amazing. There you go. There's another one. I think it's number eight, number nine, number ten. So this is definitely worth doing, guys. I came back here not long ago and I was like, you know what? Uh, since the last time I was here, we didn't have access to the seeds. So I pretty much immediately just dismissed these resources without giving them a second thought. But then I came back recently and I was like, you know what? Actually, this is not such a bad way to go. If you can collect these, um, you're going to be having a lot of seeds really fast, more than you've ever had on the other maps. I mean, usually you only get about three of these. And I, I've, I've actually lost count now. I don't know how many I've collected now, but it's well over 10, 11, or 12. Um, yeah, so we just keep collecting them. They keep adding up and you keep moving along and you keep finding them so basically for that first part of the farming route you start at the waypoint go right out go up onto the mushroom go up to the top go all the way around come back all the way down and then now we're going to be heading down here so let's do that right now i want to show you guys exactly how many seeds you can make on this map for one character if you go all out that first section is what I recommend if you have multiple characters and you want to farm on all of them and just get it done as quickly as possible. But if you don't have a lot of characters, then I recommend going across the entire map and collecting every single one you can find, which is invaluable. And then I will show you right at the end exactly how many seeds I've managed to collect. And it's quite a lot. So if anyone adds this up, uh, if you have 70 characters, you're going to be making, by the time you finish, probably well over a thousand seeds, which adds up to over well over a hundred gold in one day. I'm not kidding, guys. If you add it up, you're going to be like, whoa, that's actually quite a lot. More than I ever imagined possible in this game. And the reason for that is because there are so many verdant herbs spread throughout this map. There's tons of them around, and they never basically run out. Uh, the more characters you have doing it, the more silver and gold you're going to make. And I highly recommend any character that can cloak or can take a lot of damage, because you got, yeah, it's going to be attacked by a lot of things along the way. The first uh, part of the farming route was fine. You're not going to have a lot of things attacking you, but the more you do it across the map, 
Of course, the more things you're going to run into. There's a chest here that you can collect if you want to. It's up to you guys. I just wanted to show it to you so you're aware of it. And you're going to find a lot of other chests spread throughout this map as well. Quite a few, in fact. And if you're willing to make the effort to go out and find them, then you are definitely going to make a lot of silver and gold in the process. Okay, so we finished that section. And now I'm going to show you the next part of the farming route, which, of course, is heading down to the Rhyme Glen. So let's go there now. So you basically you go straight ahead and go all the way down to the bottom of the map where you're going to find even more of them. There's another chest down here as well, which you can get. And I'm just going to change this to cloaking so we can go quickly grab that because it's always worth grabbing if you can get it and get away with it without being noticed by the, uh, the enemies. There we go. Grabbed it. There we go. Another ver verdant herb. And we're going to continue on our way. And there's even more of them. <laughs> I'm not kidding, guys. This just keeps going and going and going. Um, I was, like, amazed. I was like, jeez. I, I didn't expect to find all this. I really didn't. Um, and I basically, you can look across the rest of the map now and see if there's anything you missed. But for the most part, that was the majority of it. Um, you're going to find more of it on the right-hand side of the map as well. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the route for the, for the most part. I mean, there's more over here you can get as well. And there's also some down the bottom as well of this ravine. So I'll just quickly show you that too. There you go. There's some more of it. <laughs> and as I said, it, it's entirely up to you guys. If you want to farm this entire map for these seeds, you can. But if you want to do it quickly, then I recommend you just hang around the waypoints uh, that I showed you. Okay, so to finish this uh, this video up, I'm going to show you the total makeover for Countess Anise, and then I will show you one last comparison, and then I'll conclude the video. So let's head back uh, in just a second. So there you go, 16 seeds. 16 seeds, that, there, that's what I got. Plus all those other resources, and I'll just quickly show you the price of the trading post before I do that. Just so you guys can see how much they're worth. So for okay, so they're worth sixteen twenty at the moment, which isn't bad at all. And of course, if you wanted to purchase a stack of these, just to give you an idea of how much gold you're gonna make, we'll put in one stack, which is two hundred fifty. So you're gonna make forty gold per stack. And I made sixteen seeds, guys, on one character. Now, if you add that up times seventy. That's a lot. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, let's head back to the. Uh, okay, guys, here we are in Divinity's Reach. I just did the calculation for you. It's uh, one thousand one hundred and twenty seeds in total across seventy characters. If you were to farm on every single one of them, and if you were to get around fifteen, sixteen seeds on each of them, so that adds up to quite a bit. So let's see: 40, 80, 120, 160. Mm, yeah, about one sixty gold. There you go. <laughs> All right, guys, now for the total makeover section for Countess Anise, and away we go. Okay, so basically on the height, I think I believe it's a height of four. One, two, three, four. Yep, it's a height of four. On the physique, you go all the way to the left, one to the right, and it'll be at the top left-hand corner. We have light 11 on the skin tone. On the head options, you go all the way to the right, and it'll be below this one. Uh, and above that one, which is essentially one to the left of this one. So there it is. On the hair it's, itself, we're going to keep going to the right. And I believe it's one of the... Yep, it's just below this one and just above that one. As for the color of the hair itself, I believe it is campfire. And there it is. Yep, campfire. As for the accessory color itself, I don't think it really matters. I think I put anti gold on. Well, it's for the back of the hair, so yeah, it does matter. <laughs> okay, now for the face details. Okay, for the eye angle, to the middle, to the right, to the right, to the middle, to the left, left, and left. As for the eye color itself, I believe it is, yep, light blue. As for the nose, it's to the right, to the left, to the middle, to the left, to the left. And for the mouth, it is to the left, to the left, and to the left. And as for the chin and jaw, it's all in the middle. 
surprisingly, but true. And this one probably took me about five or six total makeover kits to make. It uh, was a labor of love. It wasn't too easy, but I got there in the end. So we're just going to do one last final comparison for you guys, and then we're going to wrap this up. Okay, guys, here we are with one final comparison of Kanta Sinise with the original on my right-hand side. And I, like, I think she looks pretty damn good. Pretty spot on, if I do say so myself. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Remember to like, uh, subscribe, and leave me a comment. Uh, also keep in mind I am a writer on Amazon. I just finished uh, volume four of a new series of books called uh, Unlimited Code Zero One. And if you are a fan of such stories as Darling and Franks uh, Zero Two, then please go ahead and check that out on the description below. In the meantime, I hope you guys stay safe and take care for now. And there she is giving one final bell. Take care, guys. I'll see you later. Bye.